speed. Okay, so So, <laughs> mm. question is, do you like rainy days? Yeah, sometimes I agree. I lived in um, Colorado, which is a very sunny state in the US for a long time. And sometimes it would be so sunny for so long. All I wanted was a cloudy day. <laughs> but then I moved to Ohio and <laughs> all I wanted was a sunny day. That was, it was the complete opposite of Colorado. Yeah, we're working on it. Sorry, Matt. Oh, geez. In Cleveland, I think I may have told you this. The phrase was "There's not a there's not a sky in the clouds." <laughs> Which was extremely appropriate for Cleveland. I think Cleveland's actually cloudier than Cincinnati, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think so too. It makes for good photography, though. Clouds are better the, than the bright. light. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's the, the only. Light. That's the, the only. only good thing about it that I will allow it because of that. Gotcha. Did we continue all for other people? I can, yeah, it's a little hard to hear you, Precious. I, I can generally hear you. And yes, I can present, so I will share my screen. There you go. Can you hear me better now? Oh yeah, lots better. Okay. So I was supposed to work on the mentorship guide. Oh hi, Kafai. I don't know if that's did I pronounce it pronounced him um, properly. Kafai. Yes, that's it. Hi, good morning. Well, hello, good afternoon, evening, wherever you are. <laughs> but it's evening. <laughs> Okay. Okay. What changes do we think that we could give to the mentorship program best practices? Um, I read through them. And... So I think we were going to take, I think Christy had offered last week to maybe spend 15 minutes and we can all kind of work on this document. Was that right, Christy? Yes, indeed. So we can probably have like a, a quick look. Let's see what we need to um, what we need to get done here. And if there are things that needs more work, I'm happy to continue working on it. I even like during the week as well. So perfect. So I can um, I can stop the recording. Does everybody have access to this? I think that they should. I have added the 
the settings. So I guess that everyone with the link. Okay, can cool. So I'm going to stop my share. And I think I should just pause the recording while we do some work. Is that right? Okay. And I can share my screen. Uh, well, I guess because I'm sharing anybody up here. Elizabeth, did anything change up here? I added the OSPP, which is um, oh, yeah. a mentorship program that the our Chinese community runs. Okay. Or it kind of manages. So, um, but that should be in this, I think. Okay. Um, I had added, so I, I, I'll talk through these through here. So I had added like responsibilities to the organization. If we wanted to split them out as like pre-project, during the project, and then post-project, I didn't take time to move any of these things into the respective categories. I don't know if that makes sense to people or if we don't need to do that. I actually like that because I feel like, especially the pre-project stuff, like I don't know that mentors understand that they mm -hmm. should also be jumping in now, even yeah. though we haven't chosen anybody yet, like that's still part of their yep. kind of that, their ask. So um, I like that, how you have that separated out, I think is important. Okay. Um, yes, I think the same. Okay. Christy, do you want to try to move some of those in or do you want me to try to? Um, we can, I can try to like, um, probably fill those categories with more information. Okay. And I can go back again to the document and maybe arrange the paragraphs. So in a way that they can you know, make sense. Right on. Okay. And I, I think like, like the one I'm here, like inform mentoring capacity will be reduced. Like that could like you know, be here, <laughs> it could be here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so I think like it's okay for one item to necessarily live in each one. Ah, I see. Okay, I see what you mean now. We can, yeah, we can maybe do that now or we can just go through document once and then we can maybe. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so I added, Sorry, Matt, I have a quick question yeah, yeah. before you go forward. Um, when there are specific things that are attached to a specific program about um, expectations or some like a step that only Google asks for, but like outreach, mm -hmm. doesn't, where, where would that live in this document, do you think? I think I have something for that. It would be down, it's at this. Okay. Because I think you're right. I, and I think every each program changes a little bit every year. And so like just the, for example, the way that Google Summer of Code does the tell us how many slots you would like, like that outreach, he doesn't do that. And so that, that kind of affects how we do evaluation because with Outreachy, the evaluation has to be really towards just a single individual. With Google Summer of Code, the evaluation can kind of be a range of people, you know? Yeah. So I just think we need to be really attentive to that every year and like look in a lot of detail as okay. to what the program is and what we need to do in Slack, in GitHub, in relation to the um, application website um maybe those three things you know what i mean but it makes sense for us to have a person that is maybe not a mentor but someone that kn knows kind of or has looked at that or knows where to find that information and can like make sure that everybody knows kind of like a coordinator or something like that do you think there's a, a room for that here I do, and I actually had the same thought this morning um, that maybe just one person, you know, for the year of 2022 kind of thing is for every program that we're involved in kind of takes yeah. a look at how season of docs runs or how outreachy runs. 
because I think yeah. we, we had kind of assumed they all run approximately the same and they don't. Yeah, just kind of that person that's like on top of it and knows what the dates are and like has it, you know, kind of has it has it down pat. So I don't know. Okay. Um, the let's see. Um, one of the things. So I'll just talk about these three. Um, because we have so many applicants, this is, I know it says no direct messages from applicants. The, really the reason for this is because if there's a question that a person has, it's probably a question that other people have. And it really makes sense to have those questions and answers occur on the Slack channel. And if, if we do it through direct messages, like Elizabeth, you get it. I mean, you would answer the same question that I would, and then it, it's just not very efficient. And then not everybody even sees the answer. So there could be a bunch of other people that could benefit from that answer as well. Um, so I, I really think we should start signaling this in the future that we don't do direct messages with applicants. I also think it creates some inequity sometimes if um, people aren't comfortable to do direct messages and others are. I, I do think through that process, it can create some inequity. I think we should really strive for answers within 24 hours, whether it's a process answer or a technical answer or, um, I don't know, just a, a general question. So, so I just, I really think that's something we should strive for. I know it can't be guaranteed. And the reason I said 24 hours is because we do have people that are in different time zones. And sometimes it just, by the time you see the message, and are able to pick up the message 24 hours may have elapsed in, in a subsequent answer. Um, and then I think this was from also like from Amy and Elizabeth that we use Slack to define expectations, whether it's through pins, whether it's through um, uh, like the description in the channel, like we use that and we communicate that that's what we use. And then the last thing I added, and Elizabeth, you certainly alluded to this, if you are a mentor for a project, if you choose to be a mentor for a project, you are involved in the project for the life of the program, which is during the development, the definition of what that project would be. It's during the application and question period, which is, you know, kind of that the meet and greet period that is prior to application. It's during selection period, it's during the project itself, and it's during final evaluation. So. <laughs> Commitment to be a mentor is not just a summer commitment. It is a commitment that starts as soon as we um, choose to participate in a program. So if we choose to submit to Google Summer of Code, I don't even know when that was. Was it in February, January? <laughs> it was a long time. Literally, ago. yeah. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're involved from then. It's not just a, a one and done because um, I just think, I think this is really important. And I think if a mentor is putting together a project, they are really the people who are most appropriate to answer questions regarding that project, because they had taken the time to develop kind of the guidelines around that project. And I do think it's a little tricky sometimes for other people to answer questions about projects that they didn't necessarily develop. So that's my take there. Then I'm done. And I think the only things that I added were um, kind of to, exactly to what Matt just said is just kind of making sure that that expectation is that all mentors can jump in and answer questions, not just, you know, the project leads or whatever, like it can be whoever is on the mentorship team can jump, should jump in and answer questions before. Amy, did you have a comment on this one? Do you see my screen? Um, well, just because not everyone does pull requests. So, I mean, we use Garrett. We're not the only ones who use Garrett. So that's the main reason. 
So you might have a version control system and a review system. Gotcha. I mean, I'll be honest, I'm starting to kind of in, in GSOC, like I don't know the answer to this. So we ask yeah. for a proposal in GSOC, which is fine. You know what I mean? In our PRs. Um, could that be submitted via the GSOC application portal? Such a proposal? You know what I mean? Like we ask for a document that describes. Nobody knows. Yeah, no clue. Okay. I think we need to do more investigation about the actual, how the systems at Outreachy at Google kind of change every year and what they ask students to submit. Because if, if we're asking the students to submit proposals, that's fine, but like we may not need to have them submit to our repository and Google Summer of Code. Like if we can just collect it in one place, <laughs> then let's just do that. Like we don't need to add any additional overhead. And the way that we were asking for proposals in the past or the way that it occurs this year is based on prior years. And I think we had to do it that way. But if if there's an opportunity for students to say attach a document during their application period, that might be really the way to go. But I think that's connected to kind of this. You know what I mean? Okay. Kafaya, you had a couple? Yeah, it was just a few comments on um, the number of goals achieved. I wondered if we should compare it to like the goal set. So just to give like a proper like evaluation of like if you completed 100% or just that. And um, my second thought or my second comment was about um, mentee feedback. Just like for those who maybe didn't complete their program successfully or anything, just to hear why. Just I think feedback from them would be a good way to like improve for the next year or the next time there's a, yeah. I like so those that. Are, those are the thoughts that I thought to add. Yeah. I really like the feedback. And in fact, I mean, even if a student does well, you know what I mean? They graduate yeah. from the program. I mean, it'd still be great <laughs> to find out like what, what was worked. Yeah. yeah, what worked and what didn't work. It's um, I think it's a really good idea. Plus one to that. Yeah, maybe we can do that as a feedback form, like kind of a survey after like the uh, after the program that all uh, ment all the mentees can fill it out. Love it. Yeah. Yes. I, I really like that idea. And that is not something we have done in the past. Great. And the nice thing is, is I mean, it would only be from a data perspective, I mean, maybe 10, 10 to 15 mentees. So it's not like it's a, a really big set of people, you know? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Great idea. Um, I think so, uh, a suggestion for the feedback would be like asking mentees what they think might have made their contribution easier. I think that way it helps us know um, maybe what to add, like a guides or something, like what could be lacking. We get. So sometimes maybe some people find it found it harder to contribute because they could not find their feet early or they did not know how to do steps and so i think maybe a feedback will help you know like what exactly to work on for the next steps that is coming love it i mean i'm wondering if we could build this into the there's usually like a, a period at the end which is kind of like offboarding out of the program you know like make sure that you document the work that you do so that it's shareable for others. You know what I mean? So, I mean, part of the program as it comes to an end, whatever program it is, we try to help 
uh, capture the work that was done so that it could be shared forward for other people. And I'm wondering if we could include the include a form like this at that point, not even like post graduation, because sometimes sometimes people graduate and <laughs> they're, they're gone. <laughs> so just a thought. Yeah, I think I think post graduation will be fine. And even like in the cases of maybe outreach where not everybody who started will be able to like get approved. I think it's even helpful because then you'd be able to figure out why lesser people get approved. Like do you understand? <laughs> right on. Like, cool. okay. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Also, if we had like a coordinator of all of the programs, that could be that person's job that they're like not super involved in that. So like there won't be a bias, you know, like if your mentor is the one asking you for feedback on themselves, like there might be some hesitancy to, you know, be honest. But if it's like a third party person almost that wasn't super involved, but knows what's going on, they might be more willing to. I mean, that is that that's also we should probably be anonymous too, because I mean, I'd hate for anybody to feel like if they said something was bad that it could affect their graduation. So, yeah, 100%. Okay. And I know we're pretty good about it, but don't forget a lot of times how you answered lets everyone know who answered. Agreed. <laughs> So, a big especially space. if you only have like three candidates. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I, I get you. <laughs> well, like an outreachy, I mean, it's one project with one person, <laughs> so it would be pretty obvious, you know. Point well taken, Amy. Matt, did you want to talk? This isn't on the agenda, but sorry to interrupt everything. Um, did you want to talk about the templates, the issue templates a little yeah, bit? Yeah, that was that was, that was going to be this. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, we can get right into it. So, um, just so everybody knows, across all of the working groups the metrics working group so like value dei common risk and evolution um, we have created we're starting to create templates just to kind of help with the workflow of things and so one of the templates so we've created we have really three templates don't worry about miscellaneous right now but the first template is if you just have a metric idea so you're talking to somebody at a conference or you read a paper and you have an idea for a metric. This first one is really just to capture that. So just tell us a little bit about what the metric is, you know, maybe where you heard about it. The second template is for metrics release candidates. So as we actually develop a metric within a working group over the course of six months, um, part of the process is you, you ultimately finalize the metric in terms of language, but then you open an issue that kind of signals to the release team that, hey, here's a metric that's going to be part of that release process. So this issue is that. The third uh, template is for metric revisions. And so for particularly this next round of um, metrics releases over the course of the next six months, we're going to we're asking the working groups to, to focus on revising prior released metrics. So these are metrics that maybe were released two years ago or three years ago and could use a kind of another look. Um, and this could be in the form of the, the template is incorrect or it's slightly off. 
or the material that's in the metric is perhaps too detailed than what we provide now. Um, so there, there are, or there's formatting issues, but we just need to go through and, and kind of revise each of the metrics. And so if you, you know, open up a new issue, you'll be presented with these templates. And so as you revise a metric, just choose this template and kind of follow along with the template. So really what the template asks for is the name of the metric that is being revised and the website link. So it's current release on the on the website, a link to the original metric, or I'm sorry, a link to the original uh, release issue. So this would be in GitHub, it would be under issues and closed. So you just have to, to go find it in this list. You can just do a search. And, um, and then specifics as to what you as a reviewer think the working group should take a look at. And I'll show you a couple that I have done for the DEI working group. And then we have a, a checklist. The checklist is not done as part of uh, the original issue submission. It's really a checklist that once the issue is created, the working group goes through the checklist just to kind of ensure that it's ready for a second release or, you know, or a re-release. All right, are there any questions on that? It'll make more sense maybe when I show it. So um, one of the released metrics that we have is, is inclusion, time inclusion for virtual events. And so revising metric, time inclusion for virtual events. The name of the metric being revised is time inclusion for virtual events. Here is a link to the metric on the website. Whoops. And here is a link to the original metric uh, release. So time inclusion for virtual events. So this is a, a new issue for the revision. Here are the specific things that I had noted that should be updated with the metric. So some of them are naming, some of them are questions. Like I, I, I personally didn't understand how low bandwidth was part of a time inclusion metric. Um, changing things on the Likert scale from one to five to one to X. Um, just, you get the idea, just kind of walking through the list of proposed changes or things to look at. It is not, the working group could look at this list and be like, those are all terrible suggestions. We don't take any of them and you move forward. I mean, it's, that's totally cool too. And then here's what the checklist looks like. So as a working group, as you are making the revisions to the metric, you can kind of check things off. So the issue for revision has been created once you're done, you'll check this, that it's been marked as a, you know, a candidate release. Um, once we announce it to the, once we announce that this is now under review, you know, they're just kind of things that you would go through on a checklist to ensure that any changes you make are kind of following the formatting guidelines uh, of the chaos project. So does anybody have any questions now from a process perspective? I have a question. Mm -hmm. So your list here that you have, so is the working group going to also just take a look at the metric and take some time rewording and that kind of stuff, even if you didn't have it listed on your list? Like this list? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they see something that is not on this list, totally cool. If that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. These are just the things that I saw. And certainly, you know, if you're looking at time inclusion for virtual events and you're like the the third point <laughs> is also unimportant you know what i mean then cool you can remove that too and then it's really just using your best discretion like formatting changes were made on this you know if the objectives and descriptions are rewritten you would probably mark this as meta major editorial changes have been made to this metric you know what i mean so just kind of things like that but once the issue is created, and so like Elizabeth, I know you're doing this in evolution, like you just create the issue, but then it's the responsibility of the working group to actually do the work to, to kind of accommodate these changes. Okay, that sounds good. All right, so that's this. That's what, whoops, yeah, that's what all of this is. And so you can see 
oops, as far as issues go, I have four. Well, that should say revising metric, but I have four that are kind of available for the working group. And it's already 1050. So <laughs> maybe on the on next week, we could maybe spend time kind of like what we did with the mentorship stuff. You know, we could just start taking a look at each of these one by one. What do you think? That's one. Okay. Okay. That's it for me on that. Is Sean still good to facilitate next week? Do we know? He's not here, is he? I don't think he's here. No. Okay. Is he back from Europe by then? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. And then I just one quick question before we go. Elizabeth, do you do we have where is the event code of conduct? Do you know where that's located? I might have to ping Kevin. Because you know what? We had the event code of conduct. We had it for Seattle. Yeah, exactly. And so where where is where? it not on our um, event page? Let me see here. Oh, well, maybe I can just get it like going through. But like where's the markdown? Here for it is. It? Oh. Um, here it is. Oh. Interesting. Okay. That's Very linked good. to the Linux event code of conduct. I will have to look for this. Okay. I can ask Kevin too. And we might have also followed the Linux Foundation code of conduct. That happens a lot when you're co located with a larger event. Yeah. So that may not be wrong. Yeah. For, for Dublin, did we do it for Seattle? Don't we have our own code of conduct for Seattle? Have we like started we, planning Seattle? We were, oh. we were linking to the Linux. Oh, we were? Uh, foundation there too. Okay, maybe we don't have one. None, nonetheless, um, it's been suggested that we have that we update. How about this? That we at least update our project code of conduct to include events as well. That we just have a single code of conduct that cuts across all things. But that's for later. So we'll dig a little deeper into this. Okay. I couldn't find it, which is interesting. All right. Yeah, I can't find it either right now. I think do we have it? We don't have anything else, and we're one minute past. So I guess we're good. All right. Take care, all. Thank you, everybody. See you, everyone. Bye. Bye.